Today I'd like to talk to you about watching free satellite TV when you're off the grid. So if you're in some sort of off-grid situation, like maybe you're camping, you're in the middle of a power outage, or maybe you're in a location where you just don't have access to the electrical grid, how do you safely power your satellite receiver and TV without damaging it? The simplest and safest way to power your satellite receiver and TV in an off-grid situation is to use a power inverter. But not all power inverters are created equal. A power inverter converts 12 volt DC power into 120 volt AC power. And AC power is the same kind of current that's used in your home. And each of these inverters can be connected to a 12 volt plug in the dash of your car, or for even more power, you can connect it directly to a battery. But the big difference between these two inverters is the type of AC power that each one generates. The first inverter I have here is the much more common of the two. This is known as a modified sine wave inverter, a square sine wave inverter, and sometimes it's called a non-sinusoidal inverter. So the best way to explain the type of AC current that's generated by these square or modified sine wave inverters is to look at this line that I drew here. This line is like a graph of the type of AC current that's made by this inverter. So the red line here represents zero voltage and the black line represents the AC current when it is switched on. So the current switches on and off and changes direction several times a second. That's why we have uh, peaks and valleys here. But you can also see that as the current is switching on and off, there's a lot of flat spots as well. So those are uh, areas where the current is off or on for sustained amounts of time and that makes for a very choppy rough kind of AC current that's generated. Modified or square sine wave inverters like this one are of the less expensive variety and generally speaking they will power most electronic devices but they have their limitations. Because of the type of AC current that they generate a lot of sensitive electronics, like a satellite receiver, a TV, or a laptop, might tend to run a little hotter. You might notice a little bit of glitching, and sometimes they can even introduce noise into a system. The type of AC current that they generate is definitely not the same as the AC current you would get from a wall outlet in your house. They don't make the same kind of AC current that's generated from the power grid. And um, generally speaking, this kind of AC current you see here with this kind of square wave, this is not the kind of AC current that most sensitive electronics were designed to use. The better choice is to use a power inverter like this one. This one generates what's known as a pure sine wave. This is a pure sine wave power inverter. And this is really the ideal type of inverter for more sensitive electronics. And this can also be graphed, and you can see the difference here. The pure sine wave inverter has a nice smooth rolling current that's much easier on sensitive electronics. It allows your electronics to run efficiently and also cooler. And because, uh, the, because of the sensitive electronics in things like TVs, satellite receivers, and laptops, um, this is the kind of AC current that they need. A uh, pure sine wave power inverter produces the same kind of AC current that you get from the power grid, and that's the same kind of AC current that most people use at home. When you're shopping for a power inverter, have a look at the box or the back of the unit itself and see what kind of waveform the inverter puts out. That way you know what kind of power inverter you're buying. All right, so here we have the pure sine wave inverter set up to power our satellite receiver and a small TV. And I have it connected to my 12 volt power supply. This is a really handy benchtop power supply that can pretty much power anything that runs off at 12 volts. And what I did is I'm using the uh, 12 volt socket 
and I have it connected to the terminals here on the power inverter. I have it plugged into the socket on my power supply and I have everything else connected here just as if I was to plug it into the wall at home. So all we have to do is switch the power supply on and then when we switch on the inverter, you're going to hear the fan boot up right away. There's a small cooling fan on the side. And there we go. The receiver has booted up and the TV is switched on as well. And the receiver is connected to the TV with a small AV cable here. And you can see we're getting a picture but right now there is no signal because I don't have a satellite dish connected to it. We'll do that in the next step. One thing you want to watch out for when you buy these inverters is that you buy one that's appropriately sized. This one here will produce 500 watts of power if it's connected to a battery with those alligator clips. But since I am only connecting it with the power plug in a 12 volt socket, it says right on here, just make sure that you're not exceeding 150 watts. And that's not an issue with a small satellite receiver like this. This uses less than 10 watts of power consumption. And even a TV like this, a small 19 or 20 inch TV, you're probably looking at around 25 or 30 watts of power consumption. So that's well under the 150 watt limit. All right, so here is the setup in a vehicle and we have the pure sine wave inverter plugged into a 12 volt socket here in the vehicle and that will serve as our battery power and this cord just gets connected to the two terminal posts on the side of the inverter and on the other side we've got the tv plugged in here and the receiver plugged in here and i've got my receiver connected with this little av cable to the tv here and I have a satellite dish connected here. Now, if you were out in the middle of the bush camping or in some isolated place, you could just put your satellite dish on a tripod or I've even used a pallet before to set up a small KU band dish and that works just fine. And now that everything is connected, all we have to do is uh, turn the inverter on right here. And you can hear the fan start up. And the receiver has booted up as well. And the TV's come on. All right, we'll go to our receiver menu here. And we're going to uh, scan 125 West KU band. I'm not going to show any channels anyways, but we'll just get a scan going so you can see that everything is functioning the way it should. Just hit the blue scan button and blind scan, and here we go. So while this is scanning, um, one thing I notice is that everything is running cool. There's no signs of any overheating at all. So that's good. This uh, pure sine wave inverter um, it's really the best for any kind of sensitive electronic, like a receiver, a television, a laptop, a video game system. This will supply the same kind of AC current that you would get from a household outlet. And the exact same setup could work with a TV and digital converter box connected to a TV antenna and that way you can still get local news to stay informed during an emergency. And another option for watching TV off grid would be to use a portable satellite meter like this one. This one is the GT Media V8 and this is like an all-in-one receiver and TV. Usually you'd use this to uh, tune your satellite dish but it also works as a combination TV and receiver unit and all you have to do is plug in your dish to the uh, RF port. And I'm just powering this one. It is battery powered, but I'm just charging the battery right now with a 12 volt plug. 
and this one is ready to go for a scan. Here's another example of a portable satellite meter. This is an all-in-one unit receiver and TV, all in a handheld size unit. And this one's made by Sat Hero. This is the Sat Hero 400. And I don't have this one connected to a dish right now. That's why the meter says zero. But this one here has a battery inside and it uh, charges off of an AC outlet only. I don't have a 12 volt plug for this. So this is where the uh, pure sine wave inverter comes in handy for charging stuff like this that you don't have a 12 volt plug for. And all I have to do is plug the uh, charging cable into my inverter and then the inverter gets plugged into the 12 volt socket on the dash and I'm able to keep the battery charged for this. And if I wanna watch uh, satellite TV off grid, all I have to do is connect a satellite dish to this meter, run a blind scan, and it should be good to go. When you're powering your free satellite TV equipment off grid, you wanna make sure you're providing it with AC current that's as close to grid power as possible. And the best way to ensure that is to use a pure sine wave inverter. Even though they cost a little more than the more common modified or square sine wave inverters, the added investment ensures that your equipment is going to run cooler, smoother, and probably last a lot longer.